And today we're going to look at decimal place value. I know you've started the topic of decimals in class, so we're going to continue that now with decimal place value. So if in your big books you can write the heading white dots buff, decimal place value and today's date. And if you need to pause the video to do that, then you can pause the video as often as you want. So, decimal place value. We looked at place value when we did the topic of whole numbers. And place value tells us the value of a specific digit within a number. So, with our decimals, the first number after the decimal point, this digit here, is always our tenth digit. So, this column number after the decimal point is always our tenths. The second column then is always our hundredths. Don't get confused with hundreds or tens for example, it's tenths and then hundredths. And then our third column along, the third digit after the decimal point is always known as our thousandths column. You don't need to write that in your book, it's just there for you to have a look at and refer back to if you need it. So, if we look at this number here, 439.275, it's important that we say the number after the decimal point as 0.275, not 0.275. That is mathematically correct. So after the decimal point, we always say 0.275. We address each single digit. So if you can copy this into your big books, again, if you need to press pause on the video, that is absolutely fine. But you can see it. The 2 is the first number after the decimal point, so we have 2 tenths. The 7 is the second number after the decimal point, so we have 7 hundredths. The 5 is the third number after the decimal point, so we have 5 thousandths. Be careful with your spelling with these. Hundredths, the word hundred, and then THS on the end. Thousandths, the word thousand, and then THS on the end. Like I said, if you need to pause the video to copy this down, that is absolutely fine. So, continuing on with some examples then, write down the place value of the underlying digit. So, our first example here, 84.7. The 7 is underlined and it's the first digit after the decimal point, so we know we've got 7 tenths. Example B then, 0 0.952. This time the 2 is the third digit after the decimal point. So we know that that is our thousandths column. So we've got two thousandths. And then finally, example C, 113. 0.7918. Well, the 9 is the second digit after the decimal point, so we know that's our hundredths column. So we have got 9 hundredths. If you could copy them down in your big book, please, exactly as they appear on the board. And then finally, to finish off, we're going to look at words into figures. So again, we've got some examples here where we've been given the values in words and we need to convert them into figures. So four units and three tenths. Well, we know our units can be four the decimal point, so it's four units decimal point and then our tenths column is the first digit after the decimal point. So it's 4.3. 4 units and 3 tenths. 
Moving on to example two, write down the value that is five tenths more than 3.4. Well, we know that the four is our tenths column, so more than that, we need five more tenths, meaning our answer is going to be 3.9. Five more than four is nine. So three units and nine tenths. And then lastly, number three. Write in figures seven units and five thousandths. So again, we know our units are the first column before the decimal point, so to the left of the decimal point. Then we haven't got any tenths, so we've got zero tenths. We haven't got any hundredths, zero hundredths but we've got 5,000, which we know is our third digit after the decimal point. Okay, if you can copy these examples into your big book exactly as they appear there, please. And then I will set you a task to complete on this.